We are live. Welcome, THP Universe, for the first preview show of the year. Um, this is JDAX. We're gonna talk, we're gonna get you stuck in and talk everything related to this year's uh Go Cup with Cowboy Call. Uh oh. Do I have technical issues? I'm good. Oh, you're, you're good. good. Joining me today. I've got I've got Scooby 45 is here, along with the literate and T Ron and a special guest who gave us roughly 15 minutes um, of his time. Jason Finley, the man, the myth, the legend, is here. Welcome Hello, aboard, gentlemen. So let's talk. Let's get stuck in a talk and talk Goat Cup before we get to the odds. You know, this is the third iteration of the Goat Cup. Um, first one ended in a tie. Uh, last year was an emphatic win by Team Finley um, as an underdog uh, in that spot. Um, Jason, this is your 20, and I feel wrong calling you Jason, but for the purposes of the show, I'll call you Jason. Um, yeah, this, call me Mr. Finley. That's your, that's your normal <laughs> that's move, my, isn't it? That is my normal. Yes, it's my, it's my normal moniker for you. This is your 21st appearance. Um, at a THP uh, experience or an event, um, that's special. What about this community um, makes you keep coming back and supporting it like you have over the years? I think more than anything, you know, I, I hate that I'm going to admit this, but I'm a, I'm a golf nerd just like all you guys, right? Like I live and breathe it and, and I, I'm, I'm amongst it, right? So um, I may not have the time to dedicate to the to the forum that, that some of you do, but um, you know it is my job after all. But I think more than anything else, I just love the. I mean, I, I don't get much competitive golf anymore in my uh, advancing uh, handicap and age. Um, so this is kind of an outlet for for that part of it for anything co competitive wise for me. I've been accused of being a slightly competitive person at the, in, in my life. Um, so I think it's an outlet for that for me. Um, but I think in general, I just love being a part of it and, and meeting the different people. And I think it, it even in some way helps me do my job, right. To just kind of take it all in. Even I would say my, like my granddaddy approach is, you know, I sit in the front of the bus and I just I don't necessarily get back and mix it up with everybody. But I can tell you probably what everybody on the bus is talking about and what they're saying, because I'm just listening. Right. And I think that's the part where it helps me almost do my job in some regards, whether that's listening to what people are saying about the events itself and you know, thinking about how we can make the one that I'm at least responsible for better, um, but also just about golf stuff in general. Um, I think it, it helps me to, to make sure I have a, a pulse on what's happening out in the market. You know, we're, we're going to talk a lot about the ball this weekend, right? Or this week. Um, the guys that played at the Hopefully. granddaddy. <laughs> I mean, we better, <laughs> right? We better. Um, yeah. The granddaddy guys, uh, they've been talking about it on the forum. Uh, such an awesome product. You, you went on uh, Dan's show off course and, and, and talked extensively about it. Um, but what I heard on that show was how excited you were about this product. So in a, in a, in a couple second elevator speech, what, if you're playing the Chrome soft or, or, or some of your prior, uh, generations of balls, what makes this launch so special and, and why should people take a look and, and maybe switch? Yeah, I think, you know, the reality is for us, you know, the, the name changed obviously on a, on a couple of them. And, you know, if you, if you look at our business, um, we've done really, really well with Chrome Soft. We've done really well with Super Soft. Those are, you know, two of the top five selling golf balls in the market. And that's great. Um, where I would think we, or I would say we have a significant opportunity is, is really with the, the, the more elite, better player. And that's an area that we've never really cracked the code on. And this is definitely an, an attempt at that. So that's part of it and part of the name and the branding side of it. But at the end of what makes me more excited for it than ever, I mean, it's always my job to, to talk, you know, positively about our products, but 
literally this yeah. is you know i i said it today in a meeting that this is like a moment in time for us that you don't get very often right where kind of everything comes together with com the performance of these products is unbelievable we we have a noticeable advantage against the competition right uh we've been going around the country doing these chrome tour challenges where we're going head to head against you know all comers and we're not losing right um so again, when you get back to the competitor and me, I love that too. Like, you know, I love having a product that I feel very confident that if I, no matter what you're playing, right, any of the four of you, you come in and show me what you're playing. If it's not one of our balls, I'm very confident we have one that will beat it. Um, so you don't get that opportunity very often. You know, you can always find excuses and things like that, but we really are, are beating all comers. So it's hard not to be excited about that. Um, but it's also the idea that kind of everything about these these balls have changed, right? We've we we I have a slide that we use in a lot of our presentations. I showed it to the guys that were here uh, in December. That says every detail matters, right? And from top to bottom, from the things that you would expect me to say, like cores and covers and all that, um, down to the nitty gritty of the ball's wider than it used to be. It's a more premium finish. Um, we're looking at how we're applying the paint to the golf ball, making sure there's better uniformity there to the player number size is different to, you know, we have recyclable packaging now in the Chrome family of golf balls, which we hadn't in the past. Like all that is, is new and different. So um, you combine all that with an entirely new look and feel to it. Um, it's hard not to get excited about that. Uh, one more question about the product before we move on and talk about the event. Uh, selfishly, I use this ball, the Chrome Soft, yep. True Track. True Track's the best thing I think y'all have ever done. Um, but <clears throat> it well, I mean, you know, it's, maybe the OG app. Then when the Epic relaunched, that that was an awesome driver. But but from a ball standpoint, I love this ball. I love this alignment. Yep. Aid. Um, if you're going to look forward at the 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 new iteration at the stores, that the, there's a little bit of a change in in the in the Truvis pattern where it's it's multicolored, it's two colors. Like even if you get the yep. yellow, can you discuss like the reasoning behind that? Yep. So I think let's first be a little careful. It's not the same Truvis pattern as we had before. It is different, right? So before it was twelve pentagons. It's now eight hexagons. And uh, we also have the, the alignment feature there on the uh, true track. So the other thing we did is if you look at it uh, surrounding that, that line, um, the, the hexagons are actually equally shaped. So they're, they're meant to build a track. So part of what we're, we're doing with what, you know, we call visual technology is not only making it visually different, but making it functional to the golfer as well. Cause you know, we're, so we've added the alignment, we've added the tracking feature, which you can better see it spinning and, and rolling. Um, so the two colors is, is really comes down to how your eyes work. And you're always going to find like when you, when you watch that ball roll, if you line it up properly, I would be willing to bet and we can go through and do this when we're down there this week is, you're going to see that red or, or the blue is going to be the dominant color that you see as that ball is rolling. So it's how that pattern is working together to really help your eyes. So even like when we're doing the USA version of, of True Track, we're looking at how do we get the, the flag in there in such a way that the way your eyes are going to work are going to help you find that dominant, that dominant color. So it, it actually is, is functional as much as anything else. Any chance for like a purple and gold version? on the white, like, um, you know, for like team colors? Well, I'm trying to find products that sell and that people want, <laughs> and that's just one that never really rises to the top. All right. We, okay. Okay. We only have Mr. Finley for uh, six more minutes, fortunately for me. Um, I'm going to I'm not ready to jump off yet. I'm going to stay out okay. as long as I'm having fun. Okay. I'm not getting the eye yet from the wife. So I'm great. Good. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> So let's talk about the course. Um, another Dormy Network course. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to Briggs Ranch this time. We're gonna we have steers and we've got taco trucks. We got the whole nine yards. It's it's great. We've we've uh, we've seen that we've seen experiences here before. Um, <clears throat> as I look at the course, and I haven't played it, but Scooby has got plenty of information on it because he played uh, there last year. 
you get, there's only one hole with water. That's good for me. Uh, hole six is the only one that has that has Bad water. For business. I don't like that. I like when people are losing golf balls. It's good for business. <laughs> I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe we could seed some uh, in in some of the rough out there. Um, very traditional format. Uh, Scooby, what? Give me some thoughts about this course. You played it last year in in competitive rounds. Uh, what did you take away? The start, it does not, this is not a course that eases you into it. Um, one is is tight off the tee. There, there, I mean, there are places to lose the ball plenty. I, I, I see it in many. Um, one is long. Two is an angled fairway left. So if you get off tilt on one, two's not a not an easy tee shot either. Uh, I've seen balls lost in the left woods, off to the right, up to the housing development. Um, then it kind of eases up, right? So you get into your feet. You get settled, but before you can get to the taco truck on nine, seven, eight, nine can be tough. Nine is brutal. Um, by the time you tap in for double or triple or JB makes you pick up the ball on nine, you're you're ready for a taco just to let it let the front nine end. That's <laughs> that's at least my opinion of the front nine. Now the back okay. nine has a very interesting stretch um, from about thirteen in. Okay, so there's a long. So how do you know this if you time. haven't played? Have you been sc- scouting out the course? Yeah, we we my phone we, he we, blew up my phone, Finley. All we morning. um, I've talked to Scooby about it. I've looked uh on their website. Uh, Templeton, who you may or not may not know, uh, has been doing hole by hole breakdowns. I've been visually, um, I tried to find it on the PlayStation just to get mentally prepared for our match. Um, uh, you know, just to know what, what what's going on. Um, so let yeah. me ask you this: Did you do that when you played in the Granddaddy? No, don't I answer mean, it. I mean, I I got a yardage book, and I thought that I had a game plan. And <laughs> I was gonna say, <clears> that's <throat> what you did lead to the Granddaddy. Don't do that again. <laughs> uh, I, this is gonna be this is gonna be everybody's so much got a fun. plan until they get punched in the mouth. And that's absolutely what happens. We'll come back to it. Let's talk about the teams, dude. Let me just, let me just like, he's got me off my mark. We're going to talk about Team Finley first, captained by Mr. Finley. Um, well, I mean, Jason, you, you haven't been playing much according to your forum post. You come in at a 7.3. Um, that's yep. with, um, that's with Josh, uh, a 9.5, myself. Three times this year. Three times this year I've played. Three times. Okay, so, I, I, so I've played six, so we're, we're right with each other. Um, Hadley Lamar, 7.5, with me at a 12.2. Our combined handicap, which is the low on the lower end of the normal THP historical range, um, is 9.1. I'm gonna go around the horn, and then he can he can beat y'all up. T. Ryan, thoughts when you see this lineup from Team Finley? Uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's low, like you said, but um, I mean when you look at the experience in the group before, it's to me the you know you almost can throw the handicaps out the window. You guys have all played competitive golf at, on THP before, so um, I'm really excited to see this group and uh, to see Jason bring back another ring. Is it a litter? I'll go to you. Is it a big deal, small deal, no deal? The combined match record of Team Finley is 52 45 and 8. Um, against a, we'll get to the other combined record, which is nothing that none, none of those guys have played. Is that, is that a big deal or a small deal or a no deal, in your opinion? There's, there's definitely, it's definitely a big deal. Um, you know, when I look at this team, it just screams experience. Um, you got to love JB at a nine and a half and, and Finley over a seven and somehow you're a 12 now. So, um, yeah, I love this. I love this team. A lot of those losses, Josh just commented, a lot of those losses were his, um, eight, <laughs> eight, 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 of them were mine. My, my career record is, is five, eight and one. Uh, but if you take the granddaddy and another cup situation out, um, I'm five, one and one lifetime. So not saying anything, but I mean, there were four matches in my granddaddy year. So that that's four of the, of the eight losses. Fin, Mr. Finley comes in, like I said before, record, uh, in 20 appearances, record of 30, 
16 and 5, a 65% winning percentage. His singles record is even uh, way more impressive than that. In this uh, Goat Cup event, he is 5 and 1 lifetime. Jason, the knock against you used to be well, during the granddaddy, you know, the real Mr. Finley comes alive. But when we had seen you over the years in a non grandparents, whether or not that was height that we mentioned in the pre uh, in the pre show, or uh, there was a, a budget golf championship where uh, you didn't do a, as well. Um, but that was partner cup, driven. I was dragging yeah. dragging lead lead weight around with me in that one. <laughs> okay, that 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 may have been true. What 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 about this event? Do you, do you like? Because obviously you've only lost you've only lost once in, in in the last two goat cups. Um. Well, I think I think this event's a little bit different because it's a little smaller and, and more intimate. Um, and at the end of the day, I think it's. Uh, I was just trying to think of what the loss was, and I think I figured it out. But um, I think you know, at the end of the day, it's just about it's a small group having fun. And if you go back to kind of what I said originally, like this is what it's all about for me, right? Like you get to know a group of guys pretty well and go out and have a good time and whatever happens, happens, right? Like, I mean, as at the end, I know I'd like to have a good time and talk a big game, but at at the end of the day, if I can go have fun for a couple of days and help make sure you all have a great time. um, I think that's the, that's the important part. And I think this one is different than, the granddaddy in the sense that um, at least for me, like I'm not as worried about what's going on and what's happening and all that, where this one, I just kind of show up and play and let Josh worry about everything. Um, Which is certainly not the case for me on the, on the granddaddy side of things. So um, I think for me, this is kind of the best of both worlds. I get to go get some competitive juice out and then just go have a good time and not worry about much. For the second year, Oh, yeah, go ahead, go, up there. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Scoot. Jason, you mentioned helping helping your teammates, helping folks have a good time. How are you going to help your partner here get over the eight and six scar tissue? Well, A, I mean, I'm going to keep riding him, right? And if he starts playing bad <laughs> on Wednesday, he's going to hear it, but it's going to be good natured, right? I mean, I know it's like we had a great time. Well, and yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some subtle little tigs until that moment and during the round, right? Like, I don't care if my partner or not. Ask my team on, on the Callaway side during the granddaddy. I'm still giving it my whole team grief, right? So um, I think those of you that have been a part of that have seen that. I'm still going to do that. So, um, but that's my own way of kind of getting them fired up. And I'll, I'll find just that point where I won't go too far and keep keep riding him. And hopefully he carries me. I, I hope he does. hope he learned his lesson. I mean, mistakes were made, uh, lessons <clears throat> definitely learned. Um, this is the second year in a row that you show up and you're going to be partnered with someone that you thoroughly humiliated at the granddaddy. Um, so T-Ron um, also took the I was just going to say, I didn't say it earlier, but when you were talking about my record, I was going to say like half those wins are on this screen with me. <laughs> well, um, T-Ron, talk about the – what is it like to go from Finley, uh, uh, attempted Finley Slayer to um, trying to help Team Finley win a GOAT Cup? I mean, it was like, I think you said it last year, if you can't beat them, join them, right? That's kind of where I eventually got with all this. I just wanted to win something, and uh, it seemed like it would be easier going on the other side. So he's right, though. He uh, he knew the right buttons to push. Um, he didn't go too far and, uh, we had a good time and we won our match. So it, it worked. It felt, it felt weird to, to be on the winning side of things. That's for sure. But it was fun. I mean, I think he felt quite right when he gave me the first high five. No, <laughs> not. It's going to be certainly interesting. Let's talk about who we're playing. Can you stay with us, Jason? Or you still got time to talk about, at least talk about yep. the other team. Yep. So let's talk about the other team, team Brennan. Combined handicap here is 13.1. Um, AT was a late scratch here, so they have a new captain in, uh, in Mike Brennan. He comes in at a 9-7. Demurl, 23. Um, the guy that shot a 71 in the sim, uh, 7.2. 
and then bunker shot and pirate penguin both at simulator six. golf with auto two putts and no conditions whatsoever is that even a real thing that we're talking about those scores i mean are we are we so that that 71 did not concern you whatsoever you catch him in sync person that was showing off what they do in the sim remember who it was before an event that i was part of <laughs> that was me i think it was uh yeah i i do they, talking they got... about how far he hit it what his handicap was and all that before the week started, I said to multiple people, this is our guy that we got to have Austin play and just humiliate. Yeah. What happened? It was humiliation. Um, and that usually what, ha- what happens when, when you tug on Superman's cape, right? Like that's usually what, what I've learned um, with dealing with the, with the Callaway team is don't tug on, on their cape and, and you may get away with it. Bunker Shot and Pirate Ping would come in both at uh, 17.8. Um, the combined handicap again, thir- 13.1. What can you tell us about Mike? Because he's a, he's, a he's a newcomer to the, to the THP mm-hmm. universe. Yep. So Mike's been with us for almost a year now. Um, works. Let, let me just say this. He works uh, with and for me every single day. So you can imagine that he's fairly thick skinned and knows how to take a little bit. So um, that'll be your first sign of him. But uh, college athlete, um, played soccer in college. Um, so, you know, certainly athletic and relatively new to the game, um, but very, you know, athletically talented enough to, to get her done. So We'll see how he does in um, some competitive situations. I've played with him just one time ever. Um, so, uh, and I would say both of us weren't at our best. So not a real judge yet of, of his game, but I'm certain, certain I'll get a little more feedback this week. And, you know, there's always, there's always spots that are up for grabs on the granddad. It could be a little bit of a tryout for him as well. And maybe that'll make him a little more nervous. See, you know, it could I could could remind him of that on the first hole. Their career match record um, is is zero zero zero. That none of them have ever played, so we we don't have a whole lot of uh, of data or or prior uh, knowledge. Uh, uh, they could be a live dog. We'll get to some of the odds here in the second. Um, I'll go with the litter at first. Is it a team full of rookies? We've seen rookies show up and do great, right? We have for everybody, for every time a rookie shows up, wilts in the Sunday heat. We've seen people like a buck nasty show up, go four and eight. We, we, we've seen, we've seen like the, the, the J tubs of the world show up and walk on water um, out of nowhere. Do you think um, that, that this team has that in them at, based on some of the things that you've researched, at least about how they're posting the, the very limited knowledge? So I think it's a big deal. I think it's one thing if you have, you know, again, this is a small team. Four, we're talking about four players on the team, you know, all four rookies. And it's not like you've got 10 guys and, you know, you're the sole rookie, you know, kind of coming in there, never played in an experience or event. Um, you got four of them. So I think the odds of all four of these guys showing up and playing well, you know, are going to be difficult. Uh, you know, if, if there is anybody, you know, Mike Brennan, you know, maybe a former college athlete, as uh, Jason was talking about there. But the rest of these guys, I mean, they're going to be in a rude awakening. This is, you know, Briggs Ranch is not your local sim course. Uh, and, and unfortunately, I think it's going to be a beat down. D Merle, they're low catches Mr. Finley in both shamble and singles. Um, that's really. definitely. Does he have one? Is that one of those when you're my partner? Yeah. 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 I mean, we're right out of the gate shamble. Yeah. When you yeah. and I are together, I feel like we need to win that match or I'm going to get blamed for this forever. Um, <laughs> yeah. And will. it won't just be by the forum. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not nervous. Look, I, I I feel I feel really good. I was in retirement. I wasn't even going to do this anymore. And then I was watching last year's Goat Cup, and then I was like, Mr. Finley's called me out of retirement, and I am looking forward to this. Does anyone think that that the fact that that the, the team is all rookies actually plays into their favor since they don't know what they don't know? Tiron, what do you think about it? I think it helps a little bit personally. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it really just depends on, you know, the kind of uh, attitude and what they go into this with, because it can be a bit nerve wracking, right? But there is something to be said for not having that scar tissue of losing a bunch, losing real bad, um, coming, coming in thirsty for a win. But um, yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see how it plays out a team full of rookies for sure. So I'm going to say one thing and then I'm going I'm yeah. to boogie. Um, let you guys get get after it and make all your silly predictions. I'll pay attention to that later. But I think at the end of the day, the competition, yeah, it's what we're all going to talk about. It's what you're ramble on for about here. But at the end of the day, you know, everybody that's coming, we want them to have a good time. We want them to enjoy it. And we want it to be a couple of memorable days that whether win, lose, or draw, ring or not, Right. Everybody has a good time and get the chance to somehow people like to hear what I have to say usually. So, you know, pick our brains, learn as much as you can about everything. Right. Between Mike and I, we're obviously very golf ball focused, but, you know, I've got plenty of time working uh, for the company and all the, you know, in all the categories. So um, use that time, you know, to your advantage and learn as much as you can and, have a good time at the end of the day. That's what it's all about. So I know we're going to babble on a lot about the, the competition part of it. And, you know, there'll be a lot of trash talking happening around that. But at the end of the day, we just want everybody to have a good time. And hopefully that's what everybody's coming along for as well, regardless of the, of the outcome. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Finley. I'm going to, I'll see you. My tomorrow. pleasure. Thanks. Mr. I can't Finley. wait. Thanks, Jason. Can't wait Travel to- safe. Thank you. Travel safe. Get yourself there. Get a good night's rest. Ready to go. Hydrate. I'll see. I'll see you on the range. Gatorade. You know, don't drink too much tomorrow night. All we'll the be fine. We'll be fine. It's gonna be fine. And just remember that glove of yours <laughs> needs a little work. Mr. Finley, like are you close gonna make it? I hope so. But you know, wouldn't be the first time I won with a rental set. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm out. See ya. How about that? How about that? Mr. Finley joining. Um, I mean, we kind of short hopped the course a little bit because I wanted to get his thoughts on the teams. Um, So just sort of uh, stay with us here. Um, Is there anything else? I know, I know, literate. Talked a little bit about the course. Um, he got me off my mark asking me, you know, about PlayStations and, and, and different things. So, so I had to skip there. Let me, I'm going back to the course. Was there anything that y'all had in y'all's research and Scooby, since you've played it, um, that, that, that was, that was noteworthy that you think the universe needs to know about? I mean, I think Scooby touched on hole nine, the turtleback green, the lion's mouth bunker. I mean, um, all of it just sounds intimidating to me coming in before you get to the taco truck. So, yeah. <laughs> a couple of thoughts. The, the back sets up a lot of fun for match play. Um, you you got to make some choices off the tee. How much you want to bite off on 10 comes to mind. 14 comes to mind, depending on where you're at in the match. Um, the closing stretch is also hard. 16, 17, 18. I know we've had JB on the threads kind of talking run his mouth a little bit and um, I hope he can cash those because I've seen him gag away a point on 16, 17, 18 firsthand. And that's probably a point that they don't, JDAC's routine does not want to lose. No, no. Let's talk about the format and then we'll get to the matches. Uh, format's pretty, uh, pretty stock. Um, you got 18 holes, uh, shamble, best ball. Um, glad that it's not combined score. Cause I don't know if my, um, uh, Anxiety could have handled uh, the combined score um, there. Then you go to nine hole alternate shot. We we do not know which nine that's going to be on. Uh, and then we 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 kept singles. It's it's a very stock format. Let's talk about the matches. Match one, uh, best ball eighteen holes. Mister Findlay and I um, go out against uh, D Merle twenty three and Pirate Penguin. I've got this match, I mean, based on the sim round, the 71 and the grind that that, that has been uh, going on uh, from uh, Team Brennan, I've got this minus 110 apiece. I got it as a pick em. Um 
thoughts on this match? I'll start with T-Ron because you you played with him last year. So what is that like? I'm, I'm surprised you have this as a pick Um I would not have. Uh, I think you guys will will take this one. Um, I, I Like I said, it's uh, – it's a little bit of an adventure playing with him being on the other side, but he's just so consistent as you've seen, right? Um, he's going to keep you in the hole. Um, and uh, I, I see you guys taking this one pretty convincingly. Scooby, your thoughts on this one? I think you may be sandbagging to cover yourself as a flip. Um, but I think this is a key match, right? Because it's going to set the tone. Um, you know, if that sim, you know, we know we, we're joking about the sim round, but demerol has been grinding. And if mm -hmm. he shows up in Pirate Penguin, they're going to get some pops, I believe. If they play within themselves, I think this one could be competitive. All those guys have been grinding. Like I, yeah. they, they've all they've all been grinding. You, you, you've seen it in, in, in what they've posted. Illiterate. In, any thoughts on this match? Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to give, I'm going to give predictions like I always do. I'm going to call how these matches are going to finish. and. You know, it's it's hard to bet against Finley. Um, you know, Dax, you're going to have somebody in this shamble format that can get you off the tee. Again, um, you know, you look at D. Merrill um, and Pirate Penguin. You know, as one of them got a strong driver game, strong tee game, uh, can kind of keep a minute and play in from there. I mean, the pops is it's not as many as what you might think. You know, you're probably given you know four or five. Uh, you know. The pirate penguin. I don't know how you do. You know the how you're balancing that is like eighty percent. It's seventy. It's seventy. I think it's seventy percent off the left. Yeah. So I mean, he's he's probably going to get. Yeah. I think four, Josh could tell us in the in the chat if I'm wrong. Yeah, four or five would be my guess there. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like uh, I like this I like this match six and five for you and you and Finley. God. Oh, Finley and I have combined have played nine times this year. We played way less golf uh, than these other two guys, even sim golf. Okay, so let's just like I'm just trying to temper expectations here, um, and of course I'm not going to make a pick. I, I still, I mean, I like us in that match at some point. Match two, um, Josh goes out with Hedley Lamar um, against uh, Mike Brennan and Bunker Shot. Uh, I made I made uh, Team Finley. Pretty big favorite here. Minus 180 to come back on Team Brennan is plus 155. Scooby, I'll start this time with you. So, hearing from Finley about Mike's game a little bit had me waffling a touch, but then I noticed, you know, Mike Brennan earlier posted he almost threw his bag to the fishes over the weekend, I believe. So, I, I think it's going to take him a little bit to settle in. Um, I think Headley's going to play those Apex CBs really well off Josh's drive. So, I've got this one. Uh, Team Finley, probably three and two, somewhere in that range. JB maybe makes a putt on 16 and gets a little revenge. Josh only has only played once, um, and it was with me, and he can go out there and just hit every fairway. Literally, you've seen him in action. You've been his partner before. Yeah. Um, thoughts on this one? Yeah, I mean, JB is a great partner to have because he, he kind of frees you up off the tee a little bit. You know, usually uh, pretty steady. Again, he's not played a whole lot, but – um, you know, Josh coming in, at, or excuse me, JB coming in at a nine five. I, I, I love that. You know, Headley Lamar seven and a half. I like this team. You know, what I will say is if I if I found the right Mike Brennan and Jen, he's been playing a lot, and he's soft capped right now, um, which means you know he's. He, I can see why he might be wanting to throw his bag in the water, uh, but you know if he's been playing playing a lot, I like that. You know, I think that that's going to play to his advantage. I do think this one will be a little bit. A little bit closer. I'm going to go four and three for for Team Finley here, though. We'll go to match three. So it switches to alternate shot. I love the nine hole alternate shot. It's sort of a race to the finish. A lot of things can happen. This is a ton of pops uh, that 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 Finley and Josh have to fade here. I made him a big favorite. Again, I did this. Uh, I was asked to do this like I wasn't playing. Uh, so. This is the line I would have made if I if I wasn't in this goat cup. This is a ton of pops. This is an absolute ton of pops. But here is the 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 byproduct of potentially a captain's gambit with a Papa Palooza pairing as he throws two 18s out there to try to grind them out at least a half maybe. 
Um, T. Ron, is this too many pops for for Josh and Finley to fade? It's a, it's a good question. It's actually really pretty reminiscent of last year with me and Outlaw against uh, Austin and USAF, and they were dodging a lot of pops, and we ended up taking that. An alternate shot, it just takes a couple of shots to go the wrong way, and you're really behind the eight ball, as you guys know. So I, I still think I would take uh, Team Finley here, but I think it's going to be really close. So this what it's an 18. So they're going to pop every hole? No. Uh, they're, they're only uh, going to yeah. – it's nine holes. They're probably going to get like 10, 10 strokes if you average this all out. They're probably getting five so strokes. Five. Uh, yeah, they're going to lay five. Um, <laughs> look, I'm a fan of Papa Palooza parents. When I've captained, I've thrown them out there, no doubt. Um, and they and I've seen them work. I never got away with it, but I've seen Canadan get away with it before. Um, Scooby, what do you think about the pop them and drop them here? I think it'd be fun to watch Team Iron Cover shock the world that afternoon. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I can't wait to see them give it a try. I mean, five strokes is huge. If they can just keep it straight, it's going to be fun to see. Let's go to match four. This is my match in alt shot. I'm with Hadley um, against Brendan and D. Merle. Um, I made uh, us a dog here. In fact, if, if Austin was playing – when this first came out, this was this was Austin and D Merle against against Hadley and myself. That would have been a really tough putt to try to get there. Um, I, I think that that, that the, the late scratch on uh, on AT gives gives Team Finley a little bit of a chance here, um, but I still think that we're a little bit of an underdog in this match. Scooby, I'll start with you. Uh, do you agree or disagree with that? I, I disagree with that one. I think you you and Headley are going to get some of that Kartner, that Kartner magic. I think that super hybrid that Headley games is going to keep you all in play and all shot in the holes, which which matters, right? If you you flare one into the woods, it's game over. So I, I think I disagree with your line on this one. <laughs> uh, T. Ron, do you agree with the line? Like I, I just I can't, I mean, I can't keep I can't pick Team Finley for every match, so I'll just go ahead and say I agree with this line. I do think this should be close. Um, alternate shot, anything can happen, man. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say I agree with your line, and uh, and uh, Team Finley drops a point here. Okay, illiterate. Do well, you agree? So let me ask you: Are you are you are you currently still gaming the the Highwood? Like you're hitting it off the tee? I mean, it's in the bag, yeah. I mean, are you still hitting it straight? Hmm. Okay. You saw, you I think the line it. maybe tightened a little bit here for me. Uh, but I think I got to throw Team Brennan a, you know, a bone here. I like them in this match. Give me them one up. Okay. Let's get to singles because this is where it, where it all goes down. Match five to start singles day. Mr. Finley himself. Uh, five and one at the Goat Cup. 30, 16, and 5. Absolute legend against D. Merle, 23. This is a straight-up match. Straight up, according to the handicaps. No no, no pops here. Um, I made Finley a slight favorite. Minus 165 plus 125. Um, but sometimes when you get – when you draw him um, – sometimes the moment is too big for you. Like it just, it just really is. Cause he, he sort of like just doesn't make a mistake. And then before you know it, you're, you look up and you're four down. Then you're making, you're trying to make a putt on nine to cut the lead to six. Like it gets away from you so fast. It just, but <laughs> T-Ron, you've played him. Talk about playing Jason Finley in singles, and what does – I mean, not that you would know because I don't know either, but what would he need to do, uh, D-Merle 23, to pull off the shocker here? Yeah, I don't have uh, I don't have a whole lot of advice to give him uh, other than to do something different than what you and I did. Um, yeah, I mean, you're right. It's He just uh, keeps the ball in front of himself. He doesn't make mistakes when you think he might be out of a hole. He – Holes out from the greenside bunker to win the hole or something like that. So, um, I mean, you just got to keep your head up and uh, just play your game. But uh, it's a tall task, that's for sure. Definitely, Scooby. You you never you've never encountered him uh, in his natural element, but you've seen it. Um, 
any chance for the for the upset here? I mean, I'd love to say it, but we've seen THPers post time and time again that they're ready to take on Finley, and, and we know how that movie ends. Yeah, I mean, we we've seen when this. You know, here's the thing, then. If you're and I and I'll and I'll flip it around, and I'm getting a lot of flack in in the comments for being the ultimate Finley homer, which you know, you know, if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. Um, you're expected to lose, okay? So, like you, you, he's a legend. You have a chance to be a legend killer. Your your the your downside is not very much. Um, if, if you lose, you just join the scrap heap of history of other TH peers that that have called his name, walked into the ring, and walked out a loser. It, 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 whether or not it's 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 Captain Maynard or 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 me or or T Ron or uh, USAF last year, like uh, McLovin. I mean, there's just a graveyard of all of us just sitting here. So like, yeah, we thought we thought we had a chance and we didn't get it done. But if you do get it done, you join the Captain Dimples of the world. You join the Jeremy's of the, I'm sorry, form names only pal, JD Tox of the world. Somehow he beat him six and five. He beat me worse than the morning cup. I mean, he he's, let's not even talk about Jeremy right now. A whole, whole different thing. I've, I've gaslit myself on my own show. You have a chance to, to get there if um, if it's not too big for you. Match six. And I, I, don't, get I don't get a pick on the last one? Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gaslit myself and I got, got off my, my, so, my spot. What, I'm going to give some advice to D. Merrill here. Like, you have to approach this. Uh, there's – you know, there's no pressure on you. You're expected to lose. You know, and I say that in the most nice way possible because it is Finley. All the pressure is really on Finley because, like, does Finley want to lose to a rookie, you know, rookie THP or coming in and, and in, his, in his own element? And just go out there, play, and have fun. Um, you know that he's gonna he's gonna talk his talk his trash. Uh, just be mentally prepared for all that. And uh, if you do that, you know, maybe you give yourself a chance and you play well. If not, if you let them get in your head, you're looking at a, a beatdown probably. But I do like Finley in this match, um, and we'll go six and four. Okay. My match, I get to ride in the cart and watch that match uh, while I'm playing mine. I go out against Pirate. I'm not going to say a whole lot. I will say that my career uh, singles record is less than stellar. I'm one and two. The losses were to uh, Jason Finley. Um and and JD Tox, um my one win was against a literate at the rivalry. Um, I'll start with T Ron first. Thoughts on this one? Yeah, um, uh, I mean you have a lot of the experience, right? And um, but I think by the time you hit singles, right, everyone's kind of eased into what it's like to play in an event, even if you're a first timer. So I think some of that like first T jitters might have uh you know gone by the wayside um part of it will probably depend on what the score is going into the last day but um at the end of the day i'm gonna ride with experience here and uh, i think you're gonna get your second singles win illiterate thoughts have you ever had to lay pops in a match uh no no give me pirate ping okay (laughs) (laughs) scooby we've heard about the putter struggles i think pirate penguin he's getting the pops he picked up a new callaway six hybrid and and if you bag a six hybrid which which i do that tells me that he's he's able to play within himself and if you play within yourself with pops against a putter that has three four grips on it over the last two weeks give me pirate penguin look i was just trying to search for something scooby so everyone except for T-Ron is picking Pirate Penguin in this match, just so we're clear. What's what's your pick, Dax? What do you mean, what's my pick? <laughs> okay, let's uh, moving on. Uh, match seven. Um, Hadley goes out against Mike. I made this kind of even. Um, I don't know a lot about Mike. I mean, Finley gave us a little bit of a, a preview earlier. Um Hadley, uh, his he's the least experienced of the team. He he does have a uh, I think he's one and two lifetime uh, in competitive events. Um, 
Scooby, I'll start with you. Uh, Headley's been grinding. Um, I was on his team for a previous event. Um, he's been working hard out of his uh, West Virginia mud and muck. I think he's enjoying the uh, Texas sun. I think he's going to end it on 17, that long par three. He's going to pull that Apex CB four iron, feather one in, and take Mike down two and one. That's the prediction. Okay, okay, T-Ron. Let's get some momentum here. What you got? Yeah, I think uh, something similar. Uh, I think Ted's got it. Um, I think maybe a little bit earlier than than Scooby's prediction, but I think he's going to take it. um, Maybe end it on like the, we'll call it, we'll say the 14th hole. Okay, man, that's, that's dangerously close to, to an eight and six. Um, illiterate? Yeah, you know, I think this match is going to be really tight. It, this might be, like, the match to watch. Um, you know, if we can just get, the like, the cameras to, like, kind of feature this match, um, you know, like they do at the Ryder Cup sometimes. But I, I really like how this one sets up. I, you know, I know Hadley's been grinding. I, it's You know, if I've got the right Mike and Jen, I, you know, I think he's been grinding. Um I like this match, and I, I usually don't ever do this. I usually just call winners and losers, but I'm going to go with a half here. It's going to come all the way down to 18, and somebody's going to make a putt to win the hole to have it. I don't know who that's going to be, but this is a half. I mean, I made this a pick em, at minus 110 apiece. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes all the way down to the end. Match eight. You know, the knock against Josh is that he is phenomenal on day one, and then – no matter how much he's able to try to get into power save mode, when he comes out on day two, there's a considerable sort of uh, lack of energy, if you will, um, that that seems to, to to come out of Josh. He had he's not performed well uh, in, on the second day, even though usually, the, but, well, Actually, I mean, I take the as, as a good teammate, you just need to make sure that Josh has a fresca before he tees off. Like, give it to him on the range. And he's going to be good. Now, I, I, look, I, you know, I think that he turned the corner. Like, I mean, I, th- th- he has, he, him and Dean went out there and and and, and shot uh, a best ball round uh, for the ages um, uh, last year. <laughs> he's capable. He just like at the Goat Cup, Quest Cup. Uh, there were some times where it, it felt like Josh sort of faded, and and we may need this point. Um, you know, if things get haywire earlier, um, he goes out against bunker shot. He lays a bunch of pops, sort of like he did last October. Um, is it? I get concerned because he's going to have to fade a bunch of them. Scooby, we'll start with you. What are your thoughts with uh, with JB and bunker shot here? I, mean, I think you took took my talking points a little bit. You know, last year JB had a little bit of struggles on day two, depending on you know, his record on day two is not as strong on day one. Not that there hadn't been moments. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at the rookie piece, by now this will be Bunker Snot's third round with JB. You know, the the rookie shine has worn off. Everyone has had, you know, hopefully had a amazing time with the facilities, the access to the Callaway crew. And, and by, you know, by the last day, you're you're settled and in. And I think Bunker Snot takes this one. Ooh, T-Ron. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do think it's going to be close because of the pops. Uh, and we've talked a little bit about Josh on day two, but I can't pick against him. He's just, even if he hasn't played, I mean, if you remember last year, right, he was coming into this thing on the injured list, right? He swung the fir- for the first time in forever on the first day, um, and he did just fine. So I'm going to pick Josh, but um, I think this will come down to the, to the wire. A litter, any thoughts here? Yeah, so let me give you a little bit different way to look at this. You, we always we're talking about you know Josh's day two record. Do we have any fish official historical data? Is you know what his day two official record is versus day one? I just I have his. I just had his record. Um, okay. Yeah. But I, no, I didn't break down day one or day two. I mean, it's. You, I mean, you've seen uh, you've seen Josh kind of talk about this. I think he says you know he he hasn't been traveling a lot, so. I think sometimes the travel can kind of wear on somebody. I think he's he's kind of – this is the beginning of it. I think he says he's going to be gone for like 45 of the next 60 days or something like that. He's he's at the start of this. So he's well-rested. I don't see him fading into the desert sunset, you know, sunset at, you know, on day two. I like JB here. I like him a lot. And I think he's going to win this match four and two. I like that. You know what about Josh is that um... – 
he always finds the way to hit a shot that he absolutely has to have. Like it, it, he has an uncanny ability to do that. Um, and, and I don't think this is going to be any different. Let's go. Let's go to predictions. Um, I like us in every match, by the way. Um, Scoob, I'll go around the horn. Predictions. So when you look at this and you break it down, even if you, you set aside Finley's record elsewhere, even in the GOAT Cup, I believe he's 5-1. and one. I don't see Canada on the other team. So to me, that's three points. Can the other three folks scratch out a point and a half? I think they figure out a way to do it. That's why I said that first match is, is critical. If that one goes Team Finley, I think I'm Team Finley on this one. T-Ron, prediction. I'll keep it short. It's Team Finley. Um, you guys are bringing home the ring. I I had to take the save, but I don't think it's going to be that close. Um, and I think that he's going to bring home another ring. Way to give them, like – Bullets and board, me against the okay. world, sort of material. Hey, look, I'm confident. I'm confident in you, Jadax. You got it. <laughs> Illiterate. Prediction. Yeah, I like. Team, I like Team Finley here. I'm going six and a half, one and a half for the total. I'm not. I'm just messing with you. I like you in your match, but um, you know, other than that, I've got the other one squared away. Six and a half, one and a half. Team Finley beat down. Look, I. <sighs> I do not think this is going to be a coronation. I really don't. Um, th- this other team has grinded uh, uh, probably a lot more than than we have on Team Finley. I, I just Josh has got one round in. I've got six. Finley's got three. Okay, that's a combined ten rounds between three of us. That we haven't played a whole lot now. It, it, that some of that's a byproduct of the weather. This is early on the calendar. This is the first show of the year. There's going to be, we're going to be on six more of these where during di- different portions of the year where people are going to be able to, to, to grind and we're going to be able to find a grinder's journey. Uh, but this wasn't the case because of the weather in a lot of parts of the country. I mean, even here in Nashville, we got snowed in for most of the month of January. Uh, causing a little bit of a problem with prep. I do not think this is going to be a coronation. Of course, I think that we're going to win, but I, I, I don't think that this six and a half to one and a half, I don't, I don't think that is going to be the case. Um, any final thoughts before we cut the universe loose and I go pack uh, and get to San Antonio so, so y'all can start watching this? Well, I'll, I'll go if Dax isn't going to call on anybody. So no, final, illiterate, sorry. Um, final thoughts. Uh, first off, how cool was it to have Jason Finley come on here for the first 20 minutes or so of the show and, and talk the, you know, the ball camaraderie and, uh, and everything, you know, his love for THP. So, I, you know, want to get that out of the way first. And, you know, two, I mean, this is a really, really, as he said, intimate setting. You've got, you know, eight guys, um, you know, two from Callaway there. I mean, this is, you know, this is and Josh as well. So really there's five of you. So just take it in, you know, Dax, I know you've been around all these guys before, you know, at least, you know, Finley and, and Josh, but for everybody else, I mean, you, you don't get this kind of, uh, you know, FaceTime and intimacy, you know, with people like Finley and, and Josh and, and Mike Brennan. So eat it up and, and take it in um, all the, the contests and the, you know, uh, all that stuff, aside just enjoy it and take it in and, and enjoy every minute minute of it i'll be following along and uh i'm excited to see how this thing pans out you better be following along I will. um t ron anything you know as as a, a as as a former good, good cup champion that you want yeah to uh no i mean illiterate said it best it's i mean the, the the golf is a part of it but the the hanging out after the rounds, the camaraderie, the the chance to get to, you know, bump elbows with some people in Callaway and, and the golf industry in general is just something everyone should should make sure that they keep it top of mind. But um, I'm super excited to follow along as well. And Jadax, I hope you come back with that ring, because if not, you're you're not gonna hear the end of it, my friend. Hope is not a strategy. Scooby, anything. I mean, they hit they hit on the key takeaways and I'm just excited experience season is is back on the forums, you know. I think it, it's going to be great. Can't wait to see all the updates, all the photos, follow along in the competition, knowing that that's certainly a part of it that we all get excited about, but not not all of it. Um, you know, Dax, have a blast this week, man. 
Yeah, I'm super looking forward to this. And yeah, I mean, I know it's cliche to say I just hope both teams have fun, but I think that we're going to we're going to have a blast. The calendar, the THP experience calendar kicks off with this one. And there's a bunch of great uh, experiences teed up through the course of the year. Um, we're, you know, we're going to have preview shows, six more, six more of them um, for, for some of those events. So I thank everyone for tuning in. Um, if you didn't catch it live, hopefully you're, 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 you're catching it tomorrow or, or even Wednesday morning before the matches get started. Um, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to taking y'all along on this journey, um, with me. I'm going to have an awesome time and we're going to win. Give me Tim Finley. <laughs> I mean, why, why would I not pick us? So thanks guys. Uh, we are out.